Hello everybody, I am Bolt Matrix, and today we are taking a look at Transformers Legacy Crank Case. I purchased this figure over at Amazon.com. It is also available at Big Bad Toy Store and a couple of other vendors. Oh, and Hasbro Pulse. It seems to be hitting everywhere all at once. The figure is modeled mostly in black and dark blue. There are some gray highlights and powder blue and silver at the chest, and then that head sculpt is quite good. It's very well done and a wonderful addition to the Siege or to the Skids mold. There are also molded cannons in the back, though they don't do a darn thing, unfortunately. Overall, the figure is quite striking and does work pretty well for the crankcase motif. If you remember, that original figure was a trigger con, meaning it was a block that had weapons pop out of the shoulders. The figure comes with two accessories, the first of which is this new grill that turns into a gun. This is really stupid because the grill transformation is that. That's its transformation. And then it's got a peg sticking off the back. And it's just this solid piece of plastic that's lazily painted in five little spots of silver. There's no other detail on the fi on the on it at all, and that that stinks. That really does. I would have loved to have had the winch, at least the winch hook, colored and some kind of paint done here. But no, I'll have to do it myself. And then the other weapon is a gun. It's just a gun, and it's done in translucent black plastic. And it's fine. And yes, the one gun can fit on top of the other gun with no issues, even though that looks really stupid. For posability, the head is on a ball joint, though it is a bit limited. That's a, is about as much up and down movement as you're going to get. Shoulders are on hinges, and then another set of hinges, and then swivels for 360 degree. Swivel at the bicep, bend at the elbow. Fists do swivel as well. Torso swivel. Kick forward and back at the hips, in and out at the hips, almost 90 degrees. Bend at the knees, about 90 degrees. And then ankle articulation, same as skids. You have an ankle rocker, but no real forward and back movement. All these joints allow you to pull off some okay poses with the figure, but ultimately the figure is heavily flawed in the joints. Most of the joints on my figure are annoyingly loose. And yes, I forgot to pose the head back and forth at Ken Pose. Specifically, shoulders, the, these joints that move the shoulder up and down are very loose, especially on the figure's left shoulder. So I'll put it up, and as soon as you start moving it, it will drop to a point. And it was doing it last night a lot more, so I would get it up to about that and then let it go and it would just fall. But it, with the fact that the temperature has dropped considerably to in here, uh, over the last 24 hours it looks like it might have firmed up a little bit the shoulder swivels are very loose the hips are loose and then the knees the knees on both sides left sides just tight enough right side is i mean noodly just about noodly but it does hold in certain positions oh and the uh, little tab here for the shin that will not stay. The other thing that's loose, the chest. Every time I go to move a shoulder, the chest unplugs. Doesn't matter which shoulder either. The, the chest does not stay plugged in at all. So yeah, I think I got a lemon. Yours might not have these issues, but mine sure does. Something that Crankcase does have more of than the original mold is 5 mil port placement. There are 2 mil ports on the feet, two on the back of the lower legs, which the original Skids figure does not have, one port on the back of the roof, and the roof is clear plastic, unfortunately, one on each forearm, one on each shoulder at the wheel, and one in the chest. So that is an additional three ports usable by Crankcase. If you have the Skids figure, then you know how this transformation is going to go. But before we get into it, I just want to show you one thing. You can twist the shoulders out if you want black shoulders, so you can do that. Okay, now to the transformation. Peg the legs together, and I have found that getting the legs and the, the back of the legs together, it's actually harder than you think because there's something that's preventing them from fully connecting 
to each other. I, I don't know what it is. Come under the toes and flip out the heel or flip out the wheels. Fold the front shins down. Come to the front and make sure that the head is lined up. You could grab the back and pull it down a little bit. Take the front of the chest, unpeg it, and flip it up over the head. That will become the front of the vehicle mode. And then you could push the uh, the back of the car down and peg that into place. Then come into the inside of the vehicle mode and push the legs all the way down so that they're kind of like sitting and then push the crotch up into the back of the vehicle like so and then get the legs up and pegged in and the back of the or just above the knees will peg into the roof of the car so we have to reattach the legs together and then slide and push them up and they will peg into place it's just not easy because everything keeps coming untabbed even after you get both of those legs tabbed into the roof, they still want to pop apart. Next for the shoulders, and the finished product we want is to have the front of the shoulder pointing towards the bottom of the vehicle mode, and then the wrist or the forearm pegged into this little peg right here. To do this, what we're gonna do is leave the arm like this, turn it to the side, and then fold that whole shoulder in Bend the elbow just a bit and then go in at an angle and there is a peg right where my finger is that will peg into the inside of the forearm right where my thumb is. And it's a little harder to do than you might think, but you can just kind of force it into place and it will stay once you get it in there. Then take the rear of the vehicle mode, make sure the shins are pointing all the way down fold the rear of the vehicle mode up and it will snap into place and inevitably you will push the tires back down so just fold them out again and then fold the doors down and they will very loosely peg into these little tabs that are on the outside of the toes and you hear that clicking into place yeah it just clicks and it doesn't actually stay in place and we're pretty much done the little truck mode we end up with is okay. I like Skid's truck mode or car mode better, but this little SUV is fine, especially for crankcase, though it is very light on paint, like disturbingly light on paint. The bumper or the grill does attach, and that does add some character to the alt mode, which I do like quite a bit. The thing I really don't like is the Decepticon symbol at the front. While I appreciate the coloring and I appreciate the attempt, it's not on straight. It's on crooked, which sucks. The gun can be placed on any part where you can fit it. You can put it on the wheel if you want. Bang, bang. You can put it on the hood if you want. Pew, pew. You can even put it on the rear bumper and tire for, I don't know, to shoot the birds that want to poop on you? Having the Mold Brothers next to each other, you really get a sense that they are, in fact, very different-ish. They definitely feel like different vehicles, even though they are essentially the same figure. Crankcase is, well, I mean, it's all black and it looks like it's supposed to be something gnarly, while Skids looks like it's supposed to belong in a city. It is very striking how different both of these two feel in alt mode, even though they're pretty much the same dang figure. Crankcase isn't terrible, but just... Everything's loose. Just every little joint on this thing is loose. And we can't already be having mold degradation with the Skids mold, can we? I mean, Skids has only been out for a couple of months. The, the figure hasn't even been in mass market that long. It can't be mold degradation, can it? Oh, one thing else I keep running into is... Uh, I, I don't know what's blocking the whole chest from folding down, but I have to get to a certain point and then really force it in order to pop it down. I don't know if it's the cannons. I, I don't, I, I don't know. I just don't know. But back to my point. Yeah, my crankcase is loose, is loosey goosey, like a lot. And that worries me for the longevity of this fig, of this figure in this mold. And for this review, I pulled out skids to, you know, transform him and just fiddle with him and play with him and see how he 
stacked up. Everything on skids is tight. Everything, every joint is nice and tight and has good friction to it. Every joint on crankcase is not that. There are so many shared parts here. The legs, the hips, the arms, the shoulders, well, some of the parts of the shoulders, the wheels, all of it's the same. So what changed? I literally, I, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, if I had to choose between these, go with skids. It's a much better figure, and it's a much more enjoyable figure for me specifically, where Crankcase could have been great, but it's just a mess. So folks, that's my review of Crankcase. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and I will catch you all next time.